Hi, Rangers! Arjade here from Arjade Productions at Dice Ranger Magazine. Uh, look, I'm putting together Dice Ranger Magazine for this month, this, this, this quarter, the November issue, which is taking a bit of time because I have a newborn, and newborns like attention. Unfortunately, that's just how it goes. Uh, and normally, in a, well, if you don't know Dice Ranger Magazine, you should definitely check it out. It's free. You can get it on our website just by going here and signing up to like the little... Um, you know, you can sign up and we'll email it to you in the newsletter. Um, or you can also get it from Drive Through RPG. It's like a pay what you want, so you can get it for free in there as well. Um, and every month we do a dungeon, and every month we do a... Um, like a build the battlefield thing where we try and teach you how to make some terrain. Now this month for the terrain, we're actually showing you how to use Dungeon Draft, um, the program to make um, to make maps for your dungeons. Now if we jump back over here, I already have a video on how to make dungeon maps using like Photoshop, and it uses a very old slash kind of technically free version of Photoshop. Um, which is there. You can also use GIMP using the same principles of that. Um, and if you don't have Dungeon Draft, everything I'm about to show you today can probably be done in um, Photoshop in a similar way. Um, but if you do want to watch that other one, that'll help you sort of, you know, convert the principles we talk about in Dungeon Draft to that. It also talks about making a world map there. I'm going to put a lot more videos on this channel in the coming weeks uh, at the moment. It's quit pretty, pretty dead for a while, five years ago. <laughs> you know, I haven't really posted very regularly. Uh, but my plan is to start posting a few more things on here. Um, but this video is going to go on that channel and how to, as like a how to use Dungeon Draft sort of whether it's a tutorial or whether it's a um you know uh, just a just a general review um that's the plan anyway so that's what we're going to do we're going to make the dungeon for the dice ranger um this month's dice ranger is going to be uh the dungeon is going to be like it's all druid related because our mystic times demystified focus is all on the based on the druid tribes of the different um you know things so we're going to put a, a bit of a druid druid temple uh is going to be the dungeon and that's kind of the only plan i have for this for this dungeon so without further ado let's make a dungeon i generally do a4 paper size because that's what i print things out on um here and i usually double what it normally says so i get like 40 tiles 56 tiles you can put whatever you want there they've got a bunch of different um you know you can 55 inch tv whatever like a3 paper they've, they've got the you know all that stuff there you can buy asset packs, which I haven't done. And you can also start with a map wizard, which will actually sort of randomly generate you stuff. Let's just do that just so you can see what it looks like. It's going to load a bunch of stuff. What it will do is it will ask you to pick, do you want a dungeon or a cave? It'll ask you to pick the floor and the roof, uh, floor and the walls of your thing. And you can sort of say how wide you want the boundary, the complexity and the density. Once you've picked whatever, let's pick like a wooden wall and let's pick like this, this cobblestone thing. Um, it'll generate you a dungeon, right? And then you can kind of scope around that. I'm, I'm just scrolling out by pre pressing control in the mouse wheel there. Um, and you can see, like, it'll generate you a dungeon. That's not a terrible dungeon, right? Um, so, yeah, you could do it all that way. Um, you can also change... Oh, and then when you're happy with it, you press finish. If you don't like that, you just press generate again until you get something you're happy with. You can also change, you know, these settings. You want a bit more of a different kind of dungeon you can do that sort of stuff there um we're not going to do that though uh we're gonna we'll go new uh discard the changes and we will get a new one from blank whoops i didn't want the map wizard all right so for us we got to start with a forest um so what we want to do the first step when you're using any of these kind of programs is to try and think about your topography think about what the terrain's going to look like. Now, the first thing I want, I want a forest. So, we'll pick the rainforest here. Um, and you see these different layers. It's kind of like this one is the top layer. This one is the next layer. This is the next layer. Um, and you can sort of blend them all together. You know, if you want to like a swamp. The intensity kind of controls how, how that sort of goes. You know, um, let's just do a bit of... Let's sort of represent, if you will, a bit of a, um, a bit of a cliff face there. Um, we will do more things to attach that, you know, sort of cliff face idea in in a minute. Um, and then, kind of at the bottom of the cliff face, maybe we want a bit of we want a bit of the dirt. We might make that brush size a bit smaller, the intensity a bit higher. 
just uh, yeah to really make it look like a cliff face maybe we want like a, uh, a bit of a staircase there to, to get up to that higher level um, you know you're just thinking about how do you want to divide the dungeon up so in this case it's not like a dungeon proper um, we're just kind of making uh, a whatchamacallit, a, um, like, a, it's an open sort of forest area with, like, different, different sort of rooms of the temple, if that makes sense. Um, so we do need to use topography to break it up, right? Uh, if you're in a dungeon, you'd do that with walls and things like that, but we're not really going to have a lot of, like, closed-in rooms because of how all this sort of thing is. Um, so we might make this little stairway sort of just so it looks a bit more realistic right um and so you can see there that's you know giving us a bit of a um you know it already there's a bit of structure there um to that so now uh, i do want to use some water because uh another way i want to divide this is by um you know using water to divide this and what the water whoop, what happened there what the water... Why is it connecting to that? There you go. Sometimes it does funny things. That's just part of the program, I guess. Um, and what this does, it's similar to the, the path tool where it'll just connect it. And then it'll kind of decide where things, you know, sort of have an edge. So if you want like a bigger, bigger water, you can have a bigger water. You know? Um, and... We're just going to do that to kind of simulate a river on which this this has been sort of made, right? And that gives us a bit of an idea of, we'll make that a bit bigger so it's a bit more obvious that this is the thinner part that people have to cross. Uh, we might go back to our terrain brush and just make sure that that goes to the edge of that. Now you can put stuff inside the river and it'll go under the water texture. Um, that is another thing that you can do. They also have all these different layers. So like if you want like lava or whatever, it's, it's got, you know, uh, and we might do that for, for this edge. We've got this sort of gravel looking thing here. So we can kind of like make what looks like a bit of a gravelly, gravelly edge. That's probably a bit big. Should have made that decision before I did it all. <laughs> but you get the set. Now, the other thing to important to remember is, that's important is what level it is. So below ground, below water, or use the use the layers. So in this case, we'd probably actually want like a, a layer one. Now, if you do feel that that's too big, so let's say we will do that path again. Now, that's too big and that's on the smallest brush. So one of the things you can do is it shift. It's not shift. Is it alt? Yeah, alt is like an eraser for, for this dungeon draft program. So you can see we can make it like a bit a bit smaller. Uh, and it'll just adjust that path for us nicely there. Uh, and I will just do the same thing on this side where we've just got that little bit of texture just to indicate there's an edge here that's, you know, a bit of a cliff edge. And then again, I'm just going to tidy up as you go and also I don't quite like this uh, hard edge so we just turn that intensity down and it kind of blows the edge a bit and we can do that yeah, just to blur the edge a little bit make it a bit softer there we go all right so that's kind of our topography sorted out um, and like I said path tool you can also do that with like a bridge and things so let's say we want this staircase uh, going up now this one we probably want layer two we want it a bit higher and we're just gonna you know do that now that is not that is not wide enough what we want so let's maybe make it we'll crank it all the way up to five and see how wide five is whoa that's way too wide and you just have to double click to kind of get that to end so let's try let's try four so even four is a bit big Let's try three and a half. And, mm, I'm going to go with... See, a lot of it is trial and error with these numbers. <laughs> you know, you just have to kind of guess. 
And keep in mind, you've got your squares there, so it's very easy to... Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, it's very easy to get lost in these things. Now, you notice this has gone over our little edge, so I'm just going to go back to that materials tool. I'm just going to do that, just so we you know, don't have that overlapping. All right, so we've got our topography, more or less. We've got our little bridge. Um, we've got uh, our... A sort of height area, height map there. Uh, and then the next part is all about just, I guess, making it look foresty. Um, before we do that, though, we could probably do um, a... Where is it? The actual buildings. Um, so before we do that, I'm just going to quickly save this as um, Druid Temple, just so I don't forget, because <laughs> I am likely to do that. Now, um, you can do like a whole building and it will give you, similar to that generator where you, where you pick uh, what you're doing. And let's say we've got like that uh, and we want to you know, make a building. Um, we can do it that way. Uh, and then as you can see though, that's very square. Um, so we don't really want that square in this case. Um, we want it to be kind of on an angle. So let's... Let's try and make this fairly straight-ish. So this is going to be like our main boss area, so I want this one to be quite large. Uh, and then that's going to go all the way up there and go off the map. So that's probably not what we want. <laughs> it's too far up the map. <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> uh, we'll do that there. And now I'm leaving some space there too, because I want the environment to be somewhat interactable, you know. Uh, that's going to go off the map again, but we will go maybe here. And... What if we do like a... I don't have a plan for this, can you tell? <laughs> we do that. But I think I've made a bit of a mistake for myself in it. See how it's not square? And so that's going to look really awkward if you do that. So this is kind of one of the problems. If it was Photoshop, we'd just like make it and then rotate it. But you don't have that option here. Is that going through all the dots? Yes. We've got to go through all the dots if we want it to be square, guys. That's how it works. Dots, dots, dots. Why is that not going through the dots? Dots, dots, dots. Dots, 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 dots. I'll keep it diagonal. Maybe what I'll do is I'll stop it there. Go up one. Oh, maybe we'll just go all the way up. Now, now we've got to look at the dots. Where are the dots? What is square? That is square. That is not square there, though. Is that going through the dots? That's going through most of the dots. Is that one? No, see, that's way too awkward. I think we'll get away with that. Even though it's not perfectly square, that'll do. See, it probably should have been... This one here. But anyway, it's hard. It's hard to work it out exactly. Um, but there you go. So you can see we've got like our, that can be kind of our main area. Now you notice there's no real entryway into that. So the way you do that is with doors. Uh, and you can have it whether it blocks light or not. And that's important when you do the lighting later. Um, in this case, we'll have like, I think this big, big metal door. Um, you can also have it with no door which uh, maybe that's what we will do. Now you can see it leaves, if you do that, it does leave these two sort of pillars. So, you know, that's one way to do it that's not really, I guess, good. <laughs> one way you can do, the other way that you can do the walls and stuff is to edit the points. Um, so you can put a point there, Put a point there, and then I think you can delete that middle bit. No, it won't do it for me. Never mind, ignore me. <laughs> it's all it's all fun and games here. I am gonna do that. I might actually leave a deliberate pillar. And that's probably how I'm gonna do a lot of the ruins as well. Um, but yeah, you can see that. Now I'm gonna do a similar thing down here. Uh, I will fill that in later, but basically, um, what I'm looking to do 
is so this is the other way this is how you do the floors and stuff so what I'm looking to do is uh, like I guess we'll do something like here ish I'm just getting the floors down uh, we'll do another building over here maybe maybe make a circle a hinge Ta da a hinge and then we can also strip that out uh, oh, that's not entirely... Whoa, what happened there? Okay, we're not going to do that. <laughs> what we can do, though, is put in, um, like, a different, uh, ooh, different flavor uh, of thing. Let's... There you go, just so it's got a bit of texture going on there. Um, and then we go back to this, and then we'll do like a. Could do a walkway between them. That wouldn't look too terrible. Uh, and then like maybe that can join out to. There, and then we'll put like a. Maybe another circle here. Alright. Maybe I might do like a. We'll just edit that point. Ugh, no, we won't. <laughs> we'll just do it right, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's probably easier to then bring. Is this on Snap to Grid or something? Must be on Snap to Grid. <laughs> snap Grid, there we go. We want the grid and we want the snap off. There you go. Oh, whoops. So the way I got that curve was by pressing shift because I'm an idiot. I'm used to holding shift to be a straight line in, um, in Photoshop, you know. <laughs> That's why that happened. There we go. That looks a bit more... Less phallic, I guess. Hang on, let's really just make this fit properly there we go now hopefully that's all reasonably smooth close enough uh, <laughs> now the reason why that's close enough sorry that took so long we might speed that up in the old um, you can also do caves and, and stuff like that which we're not going to do right now um, yeah, we'll speed that up. But anyway, you can see the next thing that's really good about this particular program, we'll do the walls later, but we've got the the floor fleshed out. And that's important because what we're about to do is do the scatter tool. Now, scatter tool is really cool. There's two ways you can do the scatter. There's object, which is like a single object. Um, and you can scale it and whatnot. Keep in mind, these are the five foot squares of D&D, &D, right? So you want to scale it to, to that. And you see by using the mouse wheel, I can rotate. Um, the object you've also got this scale so you can make it bigger or smaller so like we can make it bigger if we want um, and that will place like a single object uh, and your objects menus over here with all this stuff now um, what the scatter tool does is it allows you to select a bunch of objects that you want to use so for instance we want like some we want a lot of vegetation we want um, some sticks and stones and things like that. Now you have to be careful because some of these are like freaking huge. Like you see that boulder is huge. Um, we might not want that compared to like these smaller rocks. Alright, you've got some crystals. Doesn't have to have a crystal or two in there. Um, now you see how these crystals are like this red color? That's this custom color. So like we can change that to like a, a different color if we want. Just to give the, um, you know, the the... Oh, look, and it's going to, because we've got um, the thing selected, it's going to cycle through these different colors randomly. So that's cool. I didn't know it did that. That's news to me. <laughs> uh, they're stalagmites, but, you know, for what we're doing, that'll, that'll do. We've got some cobwebs. Maybe not that one because it's huge. Uh, and it's just a matter of going through these things and, like, finding what you're looking for. You can see all these water effects too. They look really good on water. Um, the same for the fish and things. And you'd want to have the layer as like under under the water if you're using 
some of those ones. Um, I'm not going to use like dead birds and stuff, but we might put some nests around. That might be not a terrible idea to do. And just getting down to the trees. You see, there's like, so many objects available. This is just the default set too. Like I haven't added any asset packs. This is just defaultly how it comes. And you can see there's magical effects there. We'll come back there to chuck them on the on that little area. Um, sh -sh 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 -sh. I know you guys are getting bored with me looking for these, so let's uh, let's skip okay. through. Okay, so you can see we've got lots okay. now. Uh, if I scroll out, oh. uh, and then what we can do is we can just do this. Run our mouse all over like crazy. We can move these later, um, but we're just doing a doing a bit of a scatter. Now you can see they're all kind of the appropriate size. They're all because we've got the scale set at one. Um, notice the rotation, it's automatically rotating them too. So, now if you just wanted to like press them one at a time, that's also like that way you can kind of choose it like randomly selects and you can pick like where you want stuff. But because we're trying to, I guess, make these ruins, I'm just gonna smash everything down, make a big mess. All right. And um, I find, especially with those big trees and stuff, like layering. You can see here we've got a nest, so we want to put some foliage around that nest. You know, try and make it somewhere that looks like a bird would live there. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so just smash it out. Um, and then you can be a bit more thoughtful with, like, you know, your, your procedure later. Man, a lot of dead trees there. I'm trying to get some of the foliage... <laughs> Oh man, it doesn't want to give me any trees. There we go. <laughs> um, the other thing we can do is, since it's not giving us enough trees, we can just focus on the trees, right? And get some stumps going. Start from scratch with just trees. Whoa, that tree is huge. I don't want that tree. Alright. Just... That way it's only trees, and that can make it look a bit more foresty. Now you might be saying, look, this looks cool, but it doesn't look very dramatic. Like this is like a great little everything's happy daytime temple looking thing. But like, what if we wanted this to be a bit more spooky? And that is where lighting comes in. We can use more sort of lighting effects. Let me just finish this off. Get a few more of these. That'll do. Maybe one over here. Okay. So, uh, that's our scatter tool. Then if you wanted to place, like, for the temple, I'll actually put, like, take my time and deliberately put stuff in. I won't bore you with that, because that takes forever. So, first of all, our ambient light is just the light that everything hits. Let's say we want it to be, like, you know, ooh, spooky purple nighttime. Uh, and that's often what I do, is I'll put, like, a bit of a darker filter on my stuff. Now, as is green, we want it maybe to be a bit more green perhaps maybe you want it to look more nighty that kind of looks a bit more like it's night time and um, then by doing that we can then sort of um, place uh, particular particular things so um, if you wanted it to be just like a generic um, you know forest that has some kind of it's dark because it's dense you can place these um, sort of where you think light would come through um, like say this this river on this cliff for instance you might place them there um, and that kind of can once you've got a couple of them like you know, going along it kind of gives you that bit of a an effect that like oh this is darker because it's in the forest more now let's go back to that object thing for a second so another great example of this let's make like a purple and like a bright pink and we'll go back to that um, the spell type things. Wherever they went. You can also search, right? So like a spell. Helps if you can spell spell. That's well. <laughs> Magic. There we go. Um, so let's say we want this one because this one looks pretty good. We'll like scale it up quite a bit. We'll put it in there. Now that looks pretty boring as is, but if we then come back over to this uh, this lighting 
tool and we you, know, you could even copy the the same code but if we put that in there that's going to make that look pretty you know magically glowing and stuff if you want more warm sort of you know fiery tones um, you can do that and you can also make them like quite intense but short uh, and that way like if you've got like a, a torch or a campfire um, so again we might come back to the object tools I might put this on like a above walls layer because I will choose torch there we go we got a little sconce uh, and I only want this to be size one I'll just scroll in here You move around with the middle mouse button. So you might like, you know, we know the wall's gonna go there. Do that. Do like one here. One across the way here. Then like, maybe we get like a campfire. Get like a big. Now I know I want this to be like a big bonfire type thing so I might just maybe not that big let's do that so it's like four by four maybe put that one on there maybe I like that one that one looks good because it looks like it's blowing in the wind we'll double it up uh, there you go. And so what I'll do then is go back to my lighting tool. We want this one to be quite bright because it's there. And then these ones over here. Ooh, we just want them to be like normal brightness. And you'll see when we put the walls in that'll block that light. Um, there. So yeah, that's basically how you make a map with this, um, and then you just go around playing that. So Dungeon Draft is pretty good. Oh, the other thing I'll show you is how to, let's save it. The other way that you then, what then happens is you can then export it, right? Um, so you can choose how you want it to be exported. Um, you can choose if you want the grid off, if you want the lighting off, if you just want the raw map, that can be done too. The other thing you can do here, which is really cool, is the, the printer filter um, camera filter. Um, and then in that case, you can just turn down the brightness and make the focus a bit and opacity. Those things uh, can sort of, you can set how you want that to be the case. <clears throat> um, if you put the grid on, you can like say, do you want the grid to be, you know, what what level quality you want it to be? Um, and it will, it will do that. Um, you can also do it as sepia as well, if you want to, you know, have a ye olde feel to it. Um, so that is, yeah, that is, that is that, I guess. And you can also determine what, like, dots per inch and what size, how many pixels you want it to be, um, per size. So there you go. And then you just click export. Let's, whoop, turn that off. Right, and there's your dungeon test. There we go. And it'll go through and do all the, all the different things. Um, whoa, what happened there? Ran out of video memory. Okay, it's probably because I'm recording. I've never had that happen before. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> you see, because I have the PPI, it have the um, it have the thing. There you go, and there's our dungeon map, and you can just like you know send that to a printer or, or whatever, and get it printed and play your games on it. So that's Dungeon Draft. It's pretty cool. There's lots of other cool stuff you can do with it. Uh, let's close that. Let's, um, you know, you can add different things. You can make the levels have different meanings. Um, you know, you can... Uh, the other thing you can do, which is cool, is if you want more terrain things, you can actually open up more slots. Um, you can get really creative with that. You can put text on it. Um, you know, there's, there's all kinds of all kinds of cool stuff you can get. Uh, so yeah, go check it out, and hopefully um, that will that will be good for you. <laughs> Ciao for now. All right, we're back here with the finished product. Um, just very quickly, I wanted to well, first of all show you the finished product. That's uh, probably where we're going to go with for the for the magazine. Um, and you can see here 
um, you know, we've got a few things that actually we have to address. So this door, it blocks lights. We just turn off the block light feature. Happy days. Remember we put those doors in, uh, unblock the light. Oh, yeah, there you go. I don't know why it's, um, I don't know what's going on there. There you go. It added the wall back in when it added the, the block light in. Uh, but there you go. So we've got these, um, can I move that across? A little bit there you go you move them so they sort of connect can I make them connect the problem is when it overlaps it'll uh, then do the thing yeah that's right close enough uh, so um, yeah we can see here we've we and as you can see with this tool on the left it's just a little arrow you can you can move things and change settings the other thing we had here was the trees uh, originally they were at level one I think and you can see like that's under the pillars and things like that so we just change that to above walls there's also above roofs so you can put roofs on them if you want to you know have like a city or something um, but yeah you can see here that's it that's that simple um, we can uh, we can turn the lighting off so we can see what the lighting looks like if you wanted to um, but I think that looks pretty good I think we've got some modeled forest we've got one two three four plus you could probably have a good combat here on this bridge it's like a very good choke point um, so that's sort of five uh, five different sort of rooms that you can have an encounter with with this map so that looks I think that looks pretty good uh, and lots of scattered terrain that makes it look like a messy forest so um, that's dungeon draft uh, it's pretty good I think you can use the same sort of principles that we talked about the topography and, and setting things out and th can thinking about dungeons and what things are being used for um, in any form of it but I just thought I'd show you the finished product and show you that that feature um, so happy days good luck making maps ciao for now